Tell me when we own. Tell me when we own. Tell me when we own. Okay. Nice. There we go. Boom. We are back. We are in here, man. Another episode of Unquantized Podcast. It's another Friday. Another four o'clock. Now my air horn's too low. But it's okay. We here. We are here. But it's funny. We was talking about something right before we started recording. And you brought up a good point. Uh, back in the day when it used to be two versions of a song. And not only was it the song and the remix, but like one version would be like a ballad. And the oh, other yeah, joint yeah. would be like a club joint. Mm-hmm. I miss those the, days, bro. Facts. The, I, don't, I doubt if it's the first song, but the biggest song I can remember doing that. Uh, SWV anything. Mm-hmm. Not only was the original to that joint a ballad, it was an interlude. Oh, yeah. And they flipped that drink. Killed it. Totally different. Bro, Only you, thing that's the same is the, the words to the chorus. You know, it's not production related, but you know the dude, Jack Thriller, the dude with the eye? Yeah. 50? He, you know he dates the girl from SWV? Yeah, Lily. Bro, I was so confused. I was like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> I saw it. I was like, wait. this." Yes. Yeah. Brandon. Hey, shout out to him. Dog, seems like an unlikely I, pair, but hey. Hey, big ups to, you, to your guy. Hey, 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 you made it, dog. Yeah, I'm yeah. not even gonna lie. Yo, okay, so hip hop related, but not not really serious. I was watching a clip of Red Man being interviewed, talking mm-hmm. about um, his Cribs episode. You know, the iconic Cribs oh, episode. Man. Mm-hmm. That Bama said, "I never really wanted to buy a big house anyway." He said, it's too many windows and doors for a lot of sneaking around, which I, I, I feel you on that. Then he was like, and plus all that space, it's too much space for ghosts to build up in your house. <laughs> I swear, <laughs> fam, <laughs> I've never heard the phrase ghost build up. What do you mean? What do you mean this is a four, a four bedroom? <laughs> no, 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 bro. It's a, it's, you know how they be like, it's a four and a half. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That other half is the ghost. Yeah, 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 on that. Yeah, he's like, yo, it's too much room for ghosts to build up in your house. That's a I wild said, statement. Fam, you have smoked the whole zip. That's hilarious. That's <laughs> super hilarious. Yeah, so, hey, watch out. Oh, young Quintendo Power in the building. Here, what up? What up, my hey, broski? Watch out for ghost build up. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that should be you a commercial. Are you experienced ghost build up? Facts. Is your extra oh, yeah, bedrooms I, not feeling right? I had a thin layer ghost build up, but it's gotten out of hand over the last year. <laughs> Damn, bro. Before Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Man, so listen, it's Friday again. I'm actually feeling good this week. I feel like I accomplished a little bit. And mm. this close to putting putting the feet up a little bit. I yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm close, but I feel like I'm also so far. I, yeah, I've, I've been burnt out. I've been exhausted, dog. This week kicked my ass, fam. This is the last week. Do you understand that? Like this, mm. this is it. After this week, we should have no more to do. Yeah, I well, think I'm. Well, gonna, yeah, go ahead. I think I'm gonna chill this weekend. I think I'm gonna just super relax like this weekend, and then top of the week I'm gonna try to go crazy one last time. Of like just like a like a, what do they call like the two week sprints? You know what I mean? There you go. Yeah, and then after that, I'm I'm done. I've retired for 2021. Duh, yeah, Duh, I'm I'm with you. And anybody listening, we talk about this every year, and we try to practice it. I still think it's good. It's a lot of like you finish out the year strong, and I get that. If you're in that mode, I'm not trying to deter you. However, think back over the year. How much time did you take for yourself? It has to be. A certain time in the year where you like be a part of life and it's the holiday season some people are around family but for the most part i think this is the best time to do it because you have thanksgiving and then you have christmas and new year so halfway through this time the world actually shuts down for the most part for a couple of weeks oh, yeah. you know what i mean so you're not really out of the game for real because everybody's out of the game for here and there right. over that amount of time so i just think it's a good time to do it and um 
Yeah, I'm mad I, I wasn't finished on November 1st, to be honest with you, bro. Yeah. And normally, like, the music industry within itself is just, like, shut down around these times. Yep. Like, you, I mean, if you ain't got your checks by now, it's going to probably be next year. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Deal's going to get sorted out. It's just, like, everything's slow. Nobody's in the studio. Nobody's going to sessions and stuff because it's just, like, everybody's home or either on tour now. I feel like everybody's out on the road trying to get money and stuff. You know what I mean? Because everybody's Facts. been in the house. So... It's going to be slow, man. So take some time. You know what I mean? Enjoy yourself. Plot and plan. There it is. And uh, people I, always like. Oh, go, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say people always like, uh, you know, and so next year I'm going to do this. Next year I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. But no one ever thinks when they are going to plan for that year. Like yeah, right. they start mm-hmm. the planning on the not the first. Let's keep it real. You ain't doing nothing on the first. <laughs> Maybe not even the second. It's around little, the third. A little, a little Pedialyte. That's it. You know what I mean? There you go. A lot of Pedialyte. But you're like, all right. Now, then you start planning for that year. Mm-hmm. If you if you slow down, get to live life a little bit, you could actually make plans November and December of the previous year, being being this year. You know? That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been trying to be on my think and grow rich. I've been I've been doing the thinking part, a lot of thinking. I'm, just, I'm working on the second. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the thinking. A lot of the first part. I'm working on the second uh, one. The second uh, one's on the, the way, you know what I mean? But a lot of that thinking part, you know what I mean? Uh, Napoleon Hill, you got us all there, buddy. <laughs> oh man, who we got in this chat? Who we, I see Young Beats Music is in here. Young Beats Music, sure. young Mr. Lakers game. Yes, indeed. Prentice is like in here. Music. The planet for next year mode, then relax. Hey. Come on. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. What's good, producer fan? What up? What up? What up? Yo, buddy. Yo, what up? In the building. What up? What up? We got Yo, watch fiction for... in here, too. Fiction, fiction, what up? Watch out for ghost build up. But <laughs> that's a wild statement, yo. I feel like that's <laughs> like a cool t shirt, like a, like we remove ghost build up and it's like the old business t shirt. Facts. <laughs> Yo, my man said it's too much room for ghosts to build up in your house. That's a wild statement, bro. That's 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 super wild. Um, so I got a few. I actually got a few topics. Oh, by the way, people that are in here now, if you got questions, this kind of the squad. I feel like the squad might have asked all their questions maybe uh, three years ago. Oh yeah. But if you got new questions, you know, now's the time to ask. We ain't gonna wait to the we ain't gonna wait till the end of the show. We ain't, we ain't gonna wait. Um, okay, so all right, I got a hip hop fun fact. We ain't gonna get into to the topics yet, but here's a hip hop fun fact for those that care about this. Did you know that Hard Knock Life, Equimini, and Reflection Eternal, the Black Star album, all came out on the same day, September twenty eighth. Right. September 29th, 1998. So, I'm, no, that's just crazy because those are like three classic albums, right? Right. But then if you that's go crazy. back, if you go back and start looking at what dropped around those times, we were spoiled as a hip hop community. So many dates where things just came out on the same day. And we're just like, yo, it's, it's another regular music drop day. Now, think about it now. Like, today music probably came out last week music probably came mm. out how, how many classic yeah. albums do you think 30 years later will be celebrated came out this year let's just say this year how many cla- i mean that goes back to that classic album conversation but nothing has like staying power anymore that's so a that's fact weird. but bro just for those three albums like i said that's just mm-hmm. one date yeah, but just crazy. for those three albums to all have come out on one day. That's and then wild. I also went back and did a little bit of research. It was the exact same with movies. <laughs> movies even more so like from the late to mid 80s to mm-hmm. maybe uh, mid uh, 1990s or maybe late 1990s. Same joint. I think it was like Robocop and like five other like super classic movies Grr. came out the same day. And we like Back That's back normal. then, it was just regular. Yeah, it was like, oh, yeah, you know, movies came out, albums came out. Fam, I did not know. I did not know. I'm not going to take things for granted anymore. I'll say that. Hey, We'll see. 
uh smoking aces what up bro it says best music series slash documentary Ooh, that's a good question Ooh, hmm it's not um, the I'll best you, go ahead okay i got two they're not the best but to me they're very interesting one's called everything's a remix i forgot what the dj's name is Five, that was yeah. i love that one i always watch that one um and then the one with uh stock was what's my boy swat uh from uh europe he did the rick aisley uh song stock uh you know what I'm talking you, about. You're talking about the uh, pop, the pre, the pre, yeah, the pre Max Martin guys. I keep forgetting yeah. Stockholm, Aiden, and something. Hold on, I gotta look it up. Yeah, the whole series was called uh, "This Is Pop." No, it's another one though. It's another one that's uh, on YouTube. It's like an old, like a uh, '80s, like the joint. Uh, here, you tell yours. I'll look it up. Damn, uh, copyright criminals, fire, Ooh, fire. Um. And his old hip hop joints like Rhyme and Reason, that was good. That's that's I think that was like late nineties. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I don't know after that. I gotta I gotta go back and look. But man, Copyright Criminals was my joint. So Saul Stock Aiden and Waterman. If you put it on YouTube, it'll be like this documentary. It's old. It's like a this. I mean, they talk about them and this is pop, but this is like a like specifically all about them and they're like gotcha. basically like the it's called the hit factory um mm-hmm. yeah and they just talk about how they like change pop music and like taught like max martin and dr luke and all that and just you know real hit maker type stuff man real vibes yeah man. and that the building was real crappy the room that mm-hmm. all the hits were made in was crappy too you just realize they was just picking people off the street and just like <laughs> at the club like yeah come come record a song but they're not like the. That's crazy. A lot of people that that went on to be legends. A lot of that is how they started. They're like, it was just me and my man, or me and my mm-hmm. folks, and we, you know, we just started messing around, and then we met this person, and blah blah blah. And next mm-hmm. thing you know, like 30, 40 years later, icons. Exactly. Yeah. No. No mm-hmm. story is. You rarely hear a story like, "Yo, so we set out to make the biggest, best pop records and make the most money." Right. Ever. Like. Nah, we had some keyboards and we was messing around. It was vibing. <laughs> I used to be in that city for the summer and I met a friend. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's always, always that. Like, oh, we went to school in seventh grade. Yeah. I'm like, damn, that's yeah. that's dope. I didn't grow up in one of those cities. I, I kind of did. It's, it's some people that mm-hmm. I did go to school with. And then through some stuff I had done later, we did end up doing like an album together. Mm-hmm. Like a... a 50 cent song together but for the most part mm-hmm. like atlanta here you like oh yeah we went to we was in elementary school together oh, like yeah, zaytoven yeah. and polo went I, I don't know if that's true I, I don't think it's true but like you'll hear stuff like that like oh yeah, yeah zaytoven went oh they cousins to high school yo they cousins mm-hmm. i used to be so envious like damn i wish i grew up in the city like that man yeah Ooh. like i think polo and monica are cousins i'm like that's a great cousin to have like <laughs> you know what i mean it's like you know family yeah. reunion like i'm pulling up with the bcds like hey cuz Hey, after you get your plate, you know, come over here. Let me play this real quick. You know what I mean? Yo, listen, no disrespect to any of my cousins, but we ain't got no Grammys to go. Yeah, my cousins need to step it up. (laughs) Fast. What are y'all doing out there? Get it together, Brittany. No, it's not. (laughs) (laughs) That's a joke. That's a joke. Yeah. Uh, A rhyme and reason the show at Backstage. All all great uh, hip hop Mm -hmm. documentaries, for sure. Yeah, that's fire. Fire. Uh, has anyone got a chance to use that Frank Dukes uh, VST? Not yet. Not nah, yet. but I know it's fire. Yeah. I'm going to check it Shout out. Shout out to young Frank Dukes. I feel like I got so many. It's like all the plugins dropped, like how them albums. It's like all these plugins dropped the same day. It's like, bro, I got a lot to, you know yeah. what I mean? It's a lot of dope plugins out. I'm not going to yeah. lie to you. Yeah, I'm excited. And some coming out. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait. Uh, Shout out to to the homie DJ Swivel. He got a plugin coming out on the 15th, which is in oh, yeah. three days. I got to check it out. I, I saw yeah. the email. I need to look at it. Yeah. I saw a little video about it. I, I, I actually took time yesterday to like thoroughly go through it and, and mess with it. Mm-hmm. I, I had to text him. I was like, oh, fam, this is fire. Awesome. Idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So be on the lookout for that for sure. Because that other one, Brian, go front. That one for vocals. That, I think it was the first one he did. I forget the name. Yeah. Bro, I think I it's called the saucer or something like yeah. that. Bro, I use that joint on leads all the time, bro. That's like. 
thing. Yeah, yeah, that's like I use that joint on drums. Oh yeah. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I tell you, I love putting like weird stuff that's not supposed to go on something. Like, yeah, that ain't really what it's meant for, but also sounds cool. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a fact. I'll tell you uh how I do stuff with that plugin. It, it may inspire somebody to do something else. I'll take a signal and split it by frequency. So like the top half will be something and the bottom half will be its own thing. And then I'll put plugins like that on the top half. Mm-hmm. And I make sure I just got a crossover switch to you know, just easily change where the, where the split is. But dog, that swivel plug in on, on the top half of whatever, mm-hmm. amazing. That's crazy. Because I'm trying to think how would I how do you route that in Fruity Loops? I'm sure it's a way. I have no idea. I got to figure that out. Because now the way, because I used to do that in Ableton all the time. Now I'm trying to think how would I do that in Fruity Loops? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and, and, and Able, in case anybody wants to know, I'll make it mm-hmm. quick. But in Ableton, you would just make a rack two chains mm-hmm. two chains on the rack <laughs> tony <laughs> that and uh on each on each chain mm-hmm. just put an eq this is the simplest way to do it There's other ways to mm-hmm. do it but just put an eq one has a, um, a high cut one has a low cut and then you just set both of those knobs to the same mm-hmm. macro so as you turn the knob it's taking the lows out of one and putting the highs in and it's just creating a, a cut off and then you just put the plug in in the top half and you know do it how you want to do it. I'm thinking about coming out with some short Ableton uh, tutorials, man. I'm trying to trying to get out here, man. Push the envelope. I see, I, I, I see you, man, doing the content. Man, give me on, man. Help me, inspire me, bro. Bro, you saw me doing that. You saw me do that video today. That took a lot. That took a whole nah, lot. Nah. A lot of people hit me. Shout out to everybody hit me on the, in the stories. Like, oh man, great. You know, just mm-hmm. happy to see me do a video, like a camera video. I'm like, yo, thank you all for the encouragement. Cause I ain't gonna lie, I don't know when the next one's coming. Yeah. Yeah, and I actually see. did a whole video earlier today, but the audio ain't the greatest because my earpiece mm-hmm. wasn't working. I didn't know it. I still might put it out though. It's about it's about forty seconds long. Hey man, if y'all see us do content, put some likes and some some comments on them things because boy, I be fighting it. <laughs> I be struggling. One hundred. Also, share it, and if if you don't mm-hmm. share it, at minimum, save it because. Yeah. It, Instagram has priorities over what actions, mm. you know, are priority or what the, the least being a like. Um, mm. I think the second is a save or something and a, and a share. And comments, I saw a video talking about comments on Instagram. Doing like the fire emojis doesn't really do a whole lot for you. But if you actually type words on somebody's comment, mm. it, it weighs more. Oh, word. Hmm. Did you yeah, see so, that thing? I think I sent it to you yesterday. It was about the allow. It's like you go in a sentence and account, and then it's like it's default to limit your your timeline. So that's probably right. why a lot of people aren't seeing a lot of stuff because it's like it, whatever it thinks is sensitive material is going to limit it. And so if you go and change that, then you'll see more stuff in your timeline. I'm like, yeah, Instagram, don't filter nothing for me. I want the old school, everything in order, and I can get back to the last post I saw. Fact. Classic days, Bro. you know what I mean? Bro, I think it's a shame how Instagram is just, they doing whatever. They leaving Damn, us out man. here to do to do stuff like this, like figure out mm-hmm. what's going on. Like, oh, uncheck the allow joint. And that probably has something to do with it. But I'm like, it's a sensitive material mm-hmm. filter. I know my reach, everybody's reach is down. There's no sensitive, really sensitive material going right. on. And also... The bad part is it doesn't really help the person. Even a tip that we were just talking about that you show, it doesn't really help the person get more reach. It helps everybody besides the person because now yeah. somebody else's content can reach you when it may not have normally reached you, but it's exactly. not going to help your content reach everybody else unless mm-hmm. everyone knows about this tip and everyone unchecks yeah. that box. And I'm like, yo, fam, Meta, Facebook, Metagram, Man. whoever you are mark like, get it get it together the, fam. the twins all y'all yeah get it get it together <laughs> i ain't gonna lie i and, and don't wait until this whole secret virtual universe is up and running to get it together also, i'm gonna show up and give you an augmented ass whooping yeah like, you gotta get it together dog so one i feel like they're just gonna abandon instagram and facebook to go for meta because i feel like it's just I feel like we got a couple more years that's going to close, but you know, social media, they, they all crumble after a while. They all kind of fall off. Um, mm-hmm. 
And then side note, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm talking like Kanye. They're bringing back MySpace. It's called Space Hey. I don't know if y'all seen it lately, but you're gonna start seeing you're gonna start seeing people post it. It's like a new social network. So if y'all want to get on something new, you know what I mean? Something to look Facts. into. Um, dang, what's another point I was gonna tell you? And I forgot. I went, I went very Kanye West right there. You yeah, you I mean? did. Yay, brain. <laughs> yes, Yay, brain. Ponzo said that uh the part two drop of Kanye, yes, it did. And yeah, I, I listened to it. Yeah, it was quite hilarious. Quite hilarious. Yeah. Facts. Uh hold on. We got some we got some comments going on here. Mm-hmm. Let's see. I think Young Beast Music saying uh, something to you. He says, Trizzle, I got a baby boy being born in three to five weeks. Hey, congratulations, my dog. Hey, hey, hey. Congrats, um, bro. You got any last minute tips for your boy? Anything you wish you knew before your daughter was born, or uh, you wish you had uh done before she was born um good question that is a good question i'm trying to think of something that's helpful man just prep man i feel like the first month is like gonna be adjustment it's not gonna be bad it's like i feel like being a parent is one of those things you you feel like you don't know what you're doing and you i still don't know but it just ends up working out it's like instinct kicks in you know what i mean so it's like stuff just kind of figures itself out but just be prepared man prep business wise you're gonna no get sleep. thrown off yeah your time's gonna get completely thrown off so Anything you could do now to prep, you know what I mean? And uh, happy wife, happy life. That's more important now than any other time. Hey, you know? meditate. Meditate. Yeah. Here I go. Meditate. Yeah, meditate. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I say, bro. You know, and then take some little time for yourself when you can't sneak out. You know what I mean? Make a beat there or two. You, you know what I mean? Make sure you keep that, you know, in line. And I think you'll be good. There you go. But yeah, you got it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What happened? Have him on uh shooting threes, you know what I mean? He's gonna be a Laker before you know it, you know what I mean? <laughs> Facts. Uh, I got a question. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, I got a question for everybody in here. So it's the end of 2021. I don't know if things are opening back up or whatever it is, mm-hmm. but are you all collabing yet? Like, are you all like in studio with people yet? Like getting right. in there, you know, old school collabs. I don't mean over the internet. I mean mm-hmm. in person collaborations. If you are collaborating right now, give me a one one one. Like if you if you're in that space in your career, or if you like nah, I'm gonna wait it out a little bit. Give me a two two two. I think I got a session coming up that I have to go to soon. So we're gonna we're hey. gonna see. I'm oh, yeah, you finally about to get out the house. Congratulations, yeah, man. Man, it's been a long time coming, bro. Yeah. I've been, I've been Akon. <laughs> <laughs> they won't let you out. Hey, fam, I'm, I'm out here. Out here. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there, bro. I'm getting there. Slowly but surely. I'm like, yeah, okay. I'm out here. Yeah, I wake up in the morning, say my four no ronies, then I hit the streets. Spectacles, tacticals, watch it while they watch. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Austin Powers is a great movie, dog. Thanks. Um, let's see. I saw some good question. Let's see. Oh, Andre 3000, one of the guys from Young Bloods or uh, Blood Cousins. Also, Future and uh, who was it? Rico from um, Rico uh, Swate. I keep, I, is it Rico Wade? I keep. Wade. I want to say. Yeah, Swate. I was about to say his, uh, his name wrong too. That's why I was like, wait, wait a minute. But yeah, they're cousins. Yeah, that's damn. I definitely said Rico Sway, Baby King, that's, and Kendrick. Oh, for sure, for uh, sure. It's a lot of people that's related. That you be like, bro, that's crazy. You know what I mean? Is it Latoya Luck and Ludacris? I feel like are related. It's, it's somebody. They're all related. That yeah. So, and you got the uh, hip hop family tree book. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. So it's, it's a lot of them out there. I need my cousins, okay. all my families. Step it up, auntie. That's you too. Okay. You know I, mean? I ain't gonna lie. My family is slipping. Yeah, here. right. I can't collab with none of these bamas. Where y'all at? Go pick up a basketball or something, man. Come on, man. Facts. I'm working hard over here. Facts. Somebody said, do y'all perform live? Uh nah. I mean, not I really. So yes. Yeah, I guess. I perform <laughs> if you count Instagram live. I perform on Instagram. I used to at least perform on Instagram mm-hmm. live for, for a smooth hour. Break out the machine yeah, and the yeah. push and, and, mm. and perform like that. That would have been fun to do uh in front of a crowd though. Oh yeah. yeah. Even yeah. when we did the uh producer power summit, it was fun making beats with everybody. So I mean it's kind of, but it's like yeah. That yeah. is true. 
Yeah. Hey, does that count as performing live? Having the power summit? That is kind of because I mean we do speak and so I guess there you I'll, go. yeah. Works for me. Dog, I it's crazy. I forgot, bro. I used to be in a band with the he's the singer, uh Benny Blanco. I, I could keep about to call him by his other name, but it was yeah. me, him, and, the, and my other homeboy, and we used to play in this restaurant in a band. I was a keyboard player for this restaurant. We would just play like music, but I couldn't really play keyboard. So I would learn, I would just like know the basic chords, but I was so trashed. I mean, they were just trying to help me out, bro. And then That's I realized funny. that it wasn't for me, dog. So I guess that was the extent of my uh, live career as far as that, like a musician. I mean, I'm better now, but then I was trash, dog. I was horrible, dog. Not gonna lie, two things. First, I thought you you were gonna say that the band was Russian. That was, no, that no. was gonna be hilarious. And second, I could picture, I could, in my mind, you playing the uh, Beverly Hills Cop theme. No matter no matter what drums come on, <laughs> all black keys, <laughs> all black keys. Bro, I used to kill. What was the uh, new shoes that I can't wait? Because you know that joint, you that baseline is one of the easy ones. Bro, I used to kill that joint, bro. Shout out to the all black keys, man. Yo, you know something that I was been meaning to ask people: What is your favorite like chord progression? Like, what song has your favorite chord progression? Because I noticed that it'd be certain songs, bro, and I just. I love when the chord, like, it's unexpected. It's like the change. You'd be like, bro, how? Where, how'd where? you go there? I was listening to uh, Gap Band, You Are My High. Bro, them mm. chords, bro. It's so stupid, dog. So I was like, I know I'm not the only one that gets excited about chord progressions like that. So I just nah. be wanting to know other people's, like, what's your favorite joint? Damn. All right, two off the top. For me, Milt Jackson, Enchanted Lady, and Allure by Jay-Z. Hmm. Those are just yeah, off, off the top. I'm pretty sure it's more, but yeah. Allure is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That generally puts you in a zone. Mm-hmm. Immediately. Hmm. Yeah. Hey, man. Y'all let me know. All right. So I got a little, a little topic here, too. So you look around the producer community and a, a lot of people, let's say for lack of a, a better term, want to get put on. You know, just like, you, you know, you want to be successful and you would like to do that in, in collaboration with somebody who's further along than you are. Mm. Sounds great. However, how often do you take a personal self-assessment and really think about what you're bringing to the table? Because mm. the thing is, if you want successful people to partner with you and pull you sure. up in a sense, what do these people not have that you can sure. offer? Or what do they have that you can offer that's the same but of higher quality? Because mm-hmm. that's the thing. A lot of people like if I hook up with uh, such and such, you know, I could produce produce with him. I'm like, I don't, I don't know if this person would necessarily need help in production. Right. They're kind of good. And also, would this person think that your level of production is really that good? That is another thing. And can you reach that output? Because people can make one or two good beats, but then it's like. I think people don't understand how many beats people are making, bro. Like the number is crazy of like, like how many shots you have to like attempt, you know what I mean? To just yes. catch a couple of them. And I think people underestimate that a lot of like, they think I can make, I made one good beat. It's like, no, bro, you have to have so many situations that you got to have like beats for in different pockets, you know? So, yeah. But um, yeah, I just want people to start taking a real self-assessment. Yeah, that's real. And, and really determining a, I mean, I know it's, it's subjective or whatever, mm-hmm. like how good you really think you are, but just look at the people you want to partner with. What can you give them? Uh, when I partnered with certain people that were like goats of the industry, the last thing I offered was production. They asked mm-hmm. for it and I did that. But my whole thing was like, what can I do that you don't have? Or sure. what can I add value to? Something that you don't really want to do. Like for instance, with Tim, it was um, like, you know, sounds and drums sure. and samples and all that type of stuff. But if you think he was known for that already, like he was like the goat of that. But I'm like, I can actually help take some of this off of your hands and sure. do it at the at the highest, highest, highest level mm-hmm. to where you won't fall. And if anything, I'll try to elevate the status that you already are as far as that is concerned. Mm-hmm. But that was a self-assessment. I had to take like, I, I didn't come up like, yo, I could, I can make a beat for you. You're right, exactly. 
Like, nah, fam, <laughs> like, kind of got that covered. So just think about other value that you can add to people. And if it's something else that people already do, make sure you're mm-hmm. damn good at it. Yeah, that's facts. That's facts. <laughs> Victoria says, like a Hail Mary in the crowd. Bro, low key, it kind of is, bro. It's kind of mm-hmm. like, you know, like weddings when they throw the bouquet and it's just like, it's kind of up in the air. It's like, it's, yeah. you can get in positions to get in better spots to catch it. You know what I mean? It's kind of random, dog. You know what I mean? That's a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. That's 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 good. That's a good analogy. The bouquet joint. Hey man, like I'm trying, that. man. I'm trying, man. Let's see. Yes, um, I feel like I saw some good questions in here. Sweetie Gabrielle Union, Zaytoven all related. That's crazy. It's too much. Yo, where do y'all get this info? I guess the internet, but I'm like, damn, y'all got the book. Y'all got the super book. I'm really disappointed in my family. I'm about to be in my family. You and you're like, shit. All right, it's about to call my cousin. I'm tired right of this time. I'm tired of this country. Can't <laughs> see. Polly. <laughs> Please, if any of my family sees this, I'm joking. It's a joke. It's some kidding. Sarcasm. Oh, no. You about to get it. You about to get I hit know. Up. I know. But people don't get my sarcasm. They don't get the dry humor. No. Nah. No, nah, they don't. They can't. They can't wait to hit you up. Um. So here's another thing that I was thinking mm. of uh, this week. I was watching a Teddy Riley interview and we all, we often talk about like having your own style and having your own sound, mm. but I'm like, what is the metric for that? Really? You know what I mean? And then of course, boom, up pops this, this Teddy Riley interview that I just happened to catch. Mm. And I think that is the metric have a style that is so different or so distinct that you could actually give it a name in, mm. in a new genre. That is having your own sound. That is having your own style. Like that's the epitome. Yeah. Of it. Like my man's mm. like, yo, this is <laughs> I christened the new Jack swing. I wonder, did they have like a board meeting where they had like a whiteboard and they was over there like, what do we name this? And they got to like, you know, <laughs> what's, that show? what's that show? Boardwalk Empire. It's like, man, yes. This mad bourbon pouring around like man we need something <laughs> there you go but listen it was so distinct and so different when he's like yo this is something new it's a basically a new sub genre called new jack swing no one was like oh man that's just mm. r&b like nah no one argued with that man like yo fam mm. nah he came up with something new that's a whole new sound yeah, so man. when i think a new sound new style that's what i think people should shoot for teddy that's raleigh cool. level no, that's real. I'm not yeah. mad. I missed yeah. the air. Yeah. Now, you know, a trend dog that I, I feel like is coming back, and I thought it was so funny, dog. It's the gym. damn, well, those two, those also. But the tubular bell, the little thing. Oh, wow. Not the not the Tupac. Bro, like, those are coming back now. I don't know. You probably don't know who Yeet is. But Yeet no. makes very, like, uh, how do I describe Yeet? It's like... Kind of dark Travis Scott ish music, but it's like okay. kind of it's like if Trippy Red and Travis Scott kind of had a baby in a way. It's like it's it's, it's gamish gamerish in a way of the sounds they mm-hmm. use a lot of times. Uh, yeah. Kind of they call them like rage beats or whatever. But you know what I mean? Like it's it's, it's on that vibe. But it's like a lot of these songs, bro. I got that tubular bell on the one. I'm like, bro, this is so crazy. I remember when I was a kid, that was like the thing to do, bro. Like every beat had that on the one. Oh yeah. And this is like crazy, like this is happening again. I feel old, bro. Like I've seen one of these trends like cycle around again for the first time. This is like the first one I really feel like I've seen it. You know what I mean? Damn. It's crazy. Man. So I get to break out the old zip disc. I got I got tubular bells in the cup. Man, I'm ready to bring back the phantom joints. You know yep. what I mean? The the brass, we out here, you know Ooh. what I mean? Okay, so let's let's play a little quick game. Uh what what do you think will come back around next? There's, there's some wild stuff from back in production past that, that will come back. If two Tubular Bells can come back, what else could come back? I want Vanguard to come back, but it ain't going to happen. <laughs> but Vanguard. I call dibs. <laughs> I call dibs on, I call on, on dibs all the on arts. Uh, uh, Shakers. I'm not mad at Shakers. Shakers was fun, man. Good times with Shakers, dog. Yeah. Yeah, Shakers, yeah. Shakers could come. Good times. Ooh, you know, mm-hmm. you know what's what's probably not going to come back anytime soon, mm-hmm. but it might come back one day. 
crashes. Yeah, I just I I just be Ooh. hating some of them crashes. You know what I mean? Crashes are only good for live finger drumming. They make live finger drumming sound mm. amazing. But yeah, 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 in a song, mm, yeah. it's a little, little tough to get off. If you put it's it so in there, dramatic. you turn the thing way down. Yeah, it's just so dramatic. I feel like it's got to be like some a roll or a fill after that crash or <laughs> and live drums. Facts. In certain cases, <laughs> you can get away with it, you know. Quintet don't say shakers for me. No, that's a fact. I used yeah. to, I went through a whole no, no hi hats, only shakers face. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, it was like early 2000s or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. Lisa's trust yeah. your producer. We're only giving Pierre Bourne credit for that sound. No, I can't even write. Pierre definitely is the go for that. <laughs> Pierre is dope, bro. I like his melodies, man. It's like he gets it, bro. He get the pocket of simplicity, but still making like unique stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, he yo, he's fire. Super I feel like, fire. bro, people, I'm telling you, bro, people think making, I feel like it's easier to make a complex beat than it is to make a simple beat, which sounds weird in a way. But a good, I mean, like a good one. A you, good know, one. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not like just That's like true. throwing something, but like, because I feel like you could trick people with all these like effects and stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah. it's easy just to keep adding stuff to it. But like a simple one where it's like, like those Dr. Dre type beats where it's like it's four sounds in this joint and everything got to matter. Them joints is tough, bro. Like, yeah, that's hard, yeah. bro. Yeah, because you can't hide behind a whole bunch of mm-hmm. layers and a whole bunch of effects. You can't hide behind any of that yeah. stuff. It's, it's you and these four sounds that are mm-hmm. out in the open. Yeah, you got to make them count. You know what I mean? True. That's a good point. That's mm-hmm. that's a super good point. Eeh. Yeah, because I feel like when you throw a bunch of effects, it's like, yeah, you could cover it up. You can make anything sound kind of cool when you gross beat it enough. And but it's like it's not a me- uh, uh, like a base to a lot of that. Like you got to have that the chord foundation to it to yeah. me a lot of times. You know what I mean? But it's Duh. yeah, that's what I've been trying to do, bro. I try to sit back and simplify. I was like, I'll make a beat and then I spend like hours of just like deleting stuff out of it. Like, all right, how do I minimize it? Like, what is is it needed here? Like, if it's is this not a my, my homeboy says is, if it's not a hell yes it's a hell no and that's kind of why i be doing a lot it's like man if it ain't if i don't love it like man it's gotta go you know what i mean makes sense i like it mm. uh you know a good exercise that some people should do or it's therapeutic it's not really exercise beat battles even if you're not really a beat battle person because that is the one and only time as a producer where it's like yo go crazy with the effects Mm-hmm. go crazy with tempo changes go crazy with right. stutters go crazy with layers there's, there's gonna be no vocals so you can put a lot of stuff in it like that's the time where you could just like dump it all yeah. in as a producer so i encourage everybody to just participate <laughs> in one beat battle or just make make beat battle beats uh every oh, now yeah. and again just because it's fun to do like you oh, yeah. really just you know a lot of crossovers a lot of between the leg dribbling no one cares oh, about the basics yeah, it's and one you know what i mean yeah. Big save, you know what I mean? Go, go, professor. You know what I mean? Do your best hot sauce. You know what I mean? Behind the back. Yeah. Skip to your loo if you would. Yeah, yeah. Good times. There you, you go. Know what I mean? Yeah. If you if you want to be a, a little bit newer, you know what I mean? Friga. You know what I mean? Nick Briz. <laughs> there you right, go. You know what I mean? We out here. There you go. There Load you up your Fetrix. Put that joint on the master. Go crazy, dog. You know what I mean? Whoa. Automate your to your heart's content. You know. Whoa. Throw a little stutters, a little rolls in there. Facts. Uh wait, DJ <laughs> Dwight. Uh, he has one of the most profound statements I've heard all year. Virginia has birthed some of the greatest producers, or some great producers. That is, I'm nice. gonna have to go ahead and agree with you, fam. And since I consider myself a great producer, and yep. ironically, happen to be from Virginia, Oracle, isn't that the same for you? That's hilarious. I I think I'm a great producer as well, and wouldn't you know it? I'm from Virginia. Man, that's a great on, statement, man. my brother. I man, I could I concur. Hey, they say truth hurts, but it feels kind of good to me right now. Yeah. Hey. A lot of you. Real I'm recognize you. real. And I seen him a couple times. <laughs> Looking familiar, bro. <laughs> Looking familiar. <laughs> uh, uh real recognize real, and I've already followed him on the ground. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, somebody says, uh, shout out to Oracle uh, for judging the eye standard uh, showcase a while back. Oh, yeah. He said he thought I was going to what? Uh, backflip back off the up. stage. I do remember that. Mm-hmm. 
Yo, the hypeness. I like to see that too in a beat battle. Oh, yeah, That's yeah, why yeah. I was never really good in beat battles. I don't have like that hype side to me. But man, you hype beast out there. Oh, I love I love watching y'all perform. Oh, yeah. You gotta have that little dance. You gotta know what the pauses is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you know it's a drum fill in there, and they go, you gotta do that. Doo-doo. Doo-doo, oh. doo-doo, 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 doo-doo. You know what I mean? It's a That's necessary. Fire. That's fire. And, and beat battles, anytime I beat there's something dramatic and the crowd be like, oh, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not no one, no one likes that. No one, no one thinks that's cool. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Bro, I, I got scarred from beat battles because I used to love like making beats like that. And then I was like in a session, I play it's like a bunch of beats like that. And the oh, songwriters right. is looking at me like, bro, if you don't get this out of here, what the hell is this? Oh no. They were just basically like, bro, this sounds like a bunch of commercials. Like it just there was just like a lot of stuff going on. It's like <laughs> we can't a bunch write to of this. Commercials. <laughs> <laughs> we can't write to this. It sounds cool, but it just can't mm. write to this. And that scarred me, bro. Cause it was like I kept playing beats and it's like, but I was on that vibe. I was really on that vibe at that time. You know what I mean? So I yeah, after that, I was like, yeah. I'm I'm done. Empty, empty song shout it, you know what I mean? Fam, I was telling my dentist about a beat battle two days ago a, the wildest situation now that we're talking about beat battles so you know just going in doing mm. the dentist thing it's like yo you got a little teeth chip two front top teeth i was like oh yeah let me tell you about that corona bottle it's like what it's like oh yeah corona bottle one night I was in a beat battle. He's like, what is a beat battle? I'm like, glad you asked, fam. That was the one, my last beat battle I was ever in. It's the one where I showed up with a, uh, a MP3 player and no one had ever seen an MP3 player before. I, I, didn't, I didn't have any equipment. Everybody still had like- He's MP3s a witch. Or anything on the stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People were just so confused. It, it got me mixed reviews. But that night was so crazy because- the stage wasn't put together properly. So sometimes it was like almost during an intermission or something, I walked and the stage came apart mm-hmm. and one of my legs slipped and I oh. fell in the middle of the stage and I was drinking a Corona. I was oh. in Coronas at the time and the bottle chipped my teeth. Dang, and that's man. how I ended up telling that story to a 71 year old white man the other day. It was crazy. <laughs> he was like, you know what you should have did? You should have went for a more up tempo beat, and you should have went more eight oh eight than baseline. That's what, a, what you would have won. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I prefer the banjo. You understand? <laughs> like you're right. I should have had a banjo, sir. You're right. You're absolutely right. Now bro. you know they love a good sample chop at beat battles. <laughs> you know, you know why what you should. Why would you show up with an MP3 player, sir? Bro, I have a theory. The smaller the equipment, so like MP3 players don't work because it doesn't look good on stage. Like when Kanye no. did the little little player during the Donna thing, it didn't have the same effect as when he had the MPC and he was out there. It was something about that that MPC and it's just like a piece of equipment. Bro, I seen yeah. this dude DJing off a of reel to reel. It looked like the most magical thing oh, in the world to shit. me, dog. I was so like, I mean, it is impressive because it's like difficult, but I think it's just part of it because it looks like a big ass equipment. It looked yeah. like he's like about to do a space launch in, in NASA and he got all these like look <laughs> old school joints. Yeah. No, that is, yeah, the performance aspect goes a long way. And the more equipment you have and the bigger the pieces of equipment you have, definitely the better. Oh man. So when yeah. y'all see my next beat battle, I'm pulling out that, that keyboard that was on the floor like blank check. <laughs> when you run it play. <laughs> I'm nah. pulling out my, my Otari 5050, the big, the big reel to reel. Bruh. I'm playing that. What's that movie? You know what I'm talking about where they had the little keyboard and you could play on you could you could Not step a on it. And flow. No, it's no, like oh, a oh, big big it, with Tom I, Hanks. It might be. I know it was in yeah, Blake Check too. Yeah, they made a reference to it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, that's hilarious. Yeah, you're gonna jump on that joint and play heart and soul. I'll help you out. <laughs> I got yeah. you, bro. I'm in there. Somebody somebody gotta do the eight oh eights. <laughs> He's a witch. <laughs> yeah, you stupid for that. And in fact, did look at me like a witch, like yo. Uh, so it's like nothing in his hand, <laughs> but he's just playing beats, and he's standing there going, "Yep, mm-hmm. 
Plus, it was a lot of like world music Grr. samples. Everything was dope. And people were like, yo, this is dope, but I don't understand what's going on. Which is the device. Right. And then the, the beats are like kind of different. They rocking, but it's a lot of Colombian samples and stuff mm-hmm. going on. Yeah. And then I, like I said, then I fell between the stage and chipped my tooth on a Corona bottle. And I was like, Damn. you know what? Then I got a flat tire on the way home that night. Dang, that was one of those life signs. Like, maybe this ain't for me. I was like, it's, it's over. Almost lost my life by getting in a fight before the beat battle start, started over a parking space. Jeez. Yes, I'm like, yo, I don't know if it's just just that night in D.C. <laughs> or just beat battles in general, but I'm, I'm, I was good. After or that. just D.C., you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good old D.C., man. <laughs> good old D.C. Either way. I ain't really okay. just throw a shot at D.C. like that, but... Nah. No, nah, you're right. But you're it's also true. Right. It's very true. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> this show ended up being funny. <laughs> so what is that? I said, this show ended up being funny. And I thought, because some of these jokes are just like, they're so specific. <laughs> oh, man. I'm still Super laughing at the Heath the Witch thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. Uh, talking about 808s, will bass guitars make a comeback in mainstream hip hop? Ooh. On the West Coast before anywhere else. Man, once we get aligned with our chakras, yes. <laughs> uh, I, um, I don't know. I, okay. I, I mean, I always like bass lines, bro. I feel like it's always a vibe. I mean, 808, don't get me wrong. I'm an 808. I love 808s. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But, you know. Like certain. Go ahead. I was just going to say a producer I really like, like his production is uh, Buddha. Buddha blesses me because I like the way he uses the 808 and he uses the real like or I don't even know if it's a real bass line but whatever sound preset he got that bass sound is perfect dog and he uses like on everything he kills it bro fire yeah. oh you know who I'm about to say who's that young young knots also from oh yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah young knots but I think it also depends on the type of music because not <clears throat> Not all genres, somebody, somebody's probably going to argue me down on this, but not all genres are conducive to an 808. Mm. Not all beats right. or all types of hip hop are conducive to an 808. Like an 808 was sound forced on certain things. <coughs> I'm like, oh, you you really wanted to get that 8 in there, right. didn't you? Because that shit ain't got no place yeah, here, bro. Yeah, it's like, yeah, let it go. You really wanted to wear them Jordans with that tuxedo, didn't you, bro? <laughs> you wanted to get them Jordans off, didn't you? You wanted to be Magic right. Magic, uh. <laughs> hey, you got on a blue tuxedo with the cactus jacks. You gotta start talking like juvenile. You wanna do that, uh? <laughs> she with that weird lingo, huh? You just wanna use 808, son. Huh? You won't leave DJ Spence alone, huh? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> shout out DJ Spence. Yo, shout out my homie Spence, bro. That is like a producer goal that it's a drum named after you. Like, yes. that is iconic, bro. Like, we, we can't sleep on that. This man has an iconic 808. Named after yes, woo, and makes hits, bro. And he's a cool dude, man. Shout out to Spence, man. Yeah, shout out to him. Got a drum named after him. Hey, man. So no one else has that. We gotta start uh, pushing the the Triza eight hundred eight. You know what I mean? All right, got it. We gotta start pushing that one. You know what I mean? It's gonna be the new standard. You know what I mean? Got you. We on it. We on it. Uh, Emmanuel said, "Been listening to Grand Central Station. Uh, slap back bass. The slap bass is crazy." That's a fact. Grand Central Station used to rock. Mm. Shout out to Larry Graham and, and, and the fam. Every time I hear slap bass, though, I think of slap it a bass, man. Slap it a <laughs> Yo, it everybody bass. loves that. Nobody remembers what movie that's from. Uh, God, Lee, you're right, bro. And I know that. Yes, it's indeed. Oh, I love you, man. Yep. I love that movie. Yes, indeed. I love you, yes, man. Indeed. There we go. It's there one of the few slap movies I actually bass. really like. Damn, slap it in bits. How do you yes, feel? Sir. How do you feel about getting your production advances in crypto? I feel like it's it's the future. Uh, I can't say I'd be mad at it. The yeah. money man. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Money Man? I don't He's think he's a so. rapper. I I wonder how that works for SEO. I feel like that's a difficult name to oh, have. Oh, didn't he SEO. just get a? Didn't he just yeah. get a deal in crypto? I heard about that. Yeah, they sent him. Uh, like a milli in, in Bitcoin, it's 15 Bitcoin. Hey, listen, if that's what he wanted, mm-hmm. I mean, you could always just turn it into cash and great marketing. So I'm not mad at the play, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it'd be something if, like, okay, I got it in crypto and I can't 
change it if I wanted right. to. Not not saying that he wants to, but yeah, if I could change it or exchange it, and I'm assuming that that's mm-hmm. something that he wanted. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that works. That works. now if I'm like yo, I love cash, only cash, only cash. You're like, how about crypto? No, but yeah, if I'm a crypto guy, I'm like, yo, this is fire, and it makes great headlines. Uh, next time I log into Uniport, I'm gonna ask for Bitcoin. <laughs> Universal gonna be like, if you don't get your spool, if you don't log your ass, <laughs> we gonna deposit it into your bank account and you be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I don't know if y'all ever dealt with Uniport. That joint is hell, dog. I hate Uniport, dog. Hurry up and wait, boy. I mean, they updated, so it should be better. But that thing was a hassle back in the day, bro. Dog. That, yo, that's fire. That's funny, too. Hitting up Uniport and asking them, <laughs> asking them to pay you in crypto. Hit the, hit the wallet, my G. Hit the Coinbase wallet. Yo, sit back. We're, ha- we're having a hard enough time paying you in actual money. You, you sit back. <laughs> Oh, you really want to wait on this check. That's right. You really don't want to get paid, huh? Yeah, you want none of that. We got to get all kinds of approval for that. Thanks. That's pretty funny. I know this is random, but I thought about this the other day while we were speaking about crypto. Like, in a circumstance of, like, my daughter loses a tooth, how do I uh, deal with, like, situations like that where we're all on crypto, like, digital currency? Do I, like... Oh, it's done. Do I pay for her, like, the tooth fairy via, like, a wallet? Do I have to get her a crypto wallet? Like, how does this things work in the future you know like, what I mean? yeah actually i gave you a dollar last night but uh it's down my advance from uniport is down five percent by the way <laughs> <laughs> so you know you see the water boys at the corner and be like hey bro i just cashed that you you know what i mean bloop, bloop. this is qr on bro, right. they, do they be out your way the water boys oh of course bro they of be course. vicious out here bro you can't look oh. you can't look them in the eye bro that's the thing as soon as oh, they, they come they lick eyes, bro, they come for you, dog. <laughs> bro, it's Man, sad. I'll be, in a, I'll be in the car. Me and my wife just pull up to the light. I'm like, oh, shit, Bobby Boucher coming. Bobby Boucher coming. Right. <laughs> bro, them kids hey, you want to hey, what? Like, dog, you're, you're about to pour this in my car. <laughs> like, dog, I just came from Costco. I have the extra large pack of Dasani <laughs> in the back, dog. We're good. No, thank you. When they walk up on me, I, I do this. Straight, fam. <laughs> Straight. Always got this on me. That's worth Anytime keeping. I go to it. That's worth keeping Straight. just for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just keep it in the car. Super good, bro. Promise. Hey. I could give you some water, actually. Do you want to buy some water? You're looking low. Let's we'll see. Grammys are getting an NFTs. Uh, what a 2022 Grammy NFT. Some I'm okay. I get some of it, but some of it I'm just like, bro, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. But it's gonna wait for the metaverse. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to get there, bro. So I get the when it makes sense for like business and stuff, I get it. But then some it's just like everybody's doing them for just like the sake of doing them, and it's not really a purpose. That's the ones I don't I'm like. I don't know. Yeah. But I also might be ignorant. So I'm like, teach me something. Yeah. In one sense, I'm with you on that. I'm like, dog, you're just doing this to do it. But at the same time, I understand trying something new out and just doing a little something to try it out so i Mm. get it i try to take with a grain of salt but you know it it is what it is if like if i bought a the grammy nft do i get to like hang that up and then that's kind of like when you like a celebrity and then they give you a college degree but you ain't really go to the school yeah you know what i mean i feel like it's like honorary joint yeah it's like an honorary grammy that you gotta pay for nah I'm, i'm good like, nah, I'm, I'm the first one with it. Check the blockchain. Like, fam, I'm not checking the blockchain. I don't care. Let's see, tracks all day says get the NFT handbook. Great read so far. Let me copy nice. and paste. Nice. A- add that to my to do list. Thank you, my brother. Appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Uh, someone says, can I create a great mix in Reason 11 without opening it up in Pro Tools? No, oh no, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. Of course you can, man. Uh, yeah, Reason it hosts the same well now it hosts the same plugins as pro tools would so therefore you'll be mixing with the with the same stuff Mm. yeah you you could yeah and i mean to be honest if you understand how eqs work they all the same they you you can get a good mix off reverbs compressors all that now if you fire with it you could get a good was it adobe audition you could be going crazy with them joints if you know what you're doing 
Dog, if you know what to do, you don't necessarily need the Hashitashi 2000. You just need something that works. You understand? It's, it's all the same at the end of the day. Like down at the yeah. core, an EQ is an EQ, a compressor is a compressor, yeah. reverb is a reverb. Um, so yeah, you could do that in anything. I urge you to check out the art of beat mixing. In exactly. that course, we actually show you how to achieve just what you ask for, a, a great mix, regardless of what DAW you use. You don't need special expensive plugins, just whatever stock plugins right. come with your DAW, and you'll be straight. Yeah, no, that's fire. Let's yeah. see. So Dr. Dre is doing Grand Theft Auto 6 music and Snoop says the music is great. I'm just concerned, man. As a as a video game, you know, enthusiast, as a Dr. Mm -hmm. Dre fan, it's two things that just they don't really move like that. Like Dr. Dre isn't known for being hasty on releasing music. And Grand Theft Auto is like the oldest game that's still bro, they ain't Grand Theft Auto 5 came out. 10 years ago? I don't know how long. It's been forever, bro. Jeez. Has they it been that long? Bro, it's been a long time, bro. Hold on, I'm about to tell you. So you're thinking that it's not going to be a good marriage? I just, I, I, it just sounds good, but it's just like, it's one of those things that's just like, I don't, I don't know if it's going to happen or when, because they keep pushing this game back, bro. So it's like, bro, so it came out in 2013, bro. Jeez, so it's, that's yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. And people still play it. Bro, I still play Grand Theft Auto right now. Same GT game, five, dog. baby. GT5. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, hopefully. Well, I mean, I feel like if anybody could pull it off, like, Cali is active. Like, ooh, Battle Cat would be great. Oh, come on, man. They got to get Battle Cat in there. I feel like Battle Cat GT5, I mean, GTA be, 6. Come on, man. That'd be nuts. Come on, man. The, it would be a lot of dope producers for uh for a GT6 game. Hey, matter of fact, here's a game. Here's a game we could play throughout this podcast. Who else would be a great producer on uh Grand Theft Auto soundtrack? You said Battle Cat, which I think is amazing. Uh I'm gonna go Rock Wilder. Oh yeah. Rock Wilder would be fire. Yeah. I wish they would do like, I mean, I know eventually it'll probably games will get like that, but like they had like a Grand Theft Auto Atlanta, and then it was just like Zaytoven and like Metro Boom and like scored the whole thing. It would be so crazy because it's just like I feel like that would paint the picture. And then you go to the bay and it's like, you know, uh like yep. Rick Rock and like you know what I mean? Like, e EA ski out there. Yeah, like that would yeah. be so like dope if they curated it like that, which I know would be you know rather difficult, but that would the, be fire though. I ain't gonna lie, that that Atlanta one that might be a little scary, right? A little too real. Oh yeah, yeah. Cause bro, every time I listen to a Battle Cat joint, I'd be like, bro, I I feel like I'm in L.A. right now. Right, right. I I'd be wanting to crib walk, but I'm like, nah. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't want no, I don't want no problem. Nah. But I'd be wanting <laughs> be, to be in my own crib with the windows and doors closed. Like, mm, nah, nah, you, nah, 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 you gonna attempt it? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's a little, little risky. A little risky. It's like that Dexter's Lab meme, and it's like uh, he's like looking at the picture, and instead of future, it's like it's like a uh, OT Genesis. I've disappointed you. <laughs> well, okay, so we got some, we got some good ones here. Uh, mechanics, facts, uh, bomb squad. Wow. Whoa. Whoa. Mm. Also, also facts. I'm not mad at that. No, mm. not not mad at all. Wow. Yeah, bomb squad for sure. Um. Uh, N-E-R-D. Ooh, Tony Hawk. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Tony Hawk Pro Skater, the new, a new one. N-E-R-D. Slap. Ooh, that'd be fire. Slap. Go crazy. I, I was waiting for somebody to say, Mr. Sarah Griffin said, Dre doing the music for it. That's why I got pushed back. Bruh. You know what? Y'all cut it out. I hope uh, so. DJ I quit. hope it come out, man. Ooh, quick yeah. to be one. Yeah. Damn. It seemed, it seemed like the West Coast is just... West Coast producers are just, it's easy to name West Coast producers that'll be good for any GTA. Mm. They just got that sound. Like, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. going on a mission. Hit, kick it. Yeah, like GTA 6, and then it's like all YG, just like, Ooh. come on, man. That, that'd that be too dangerous. I, I feel like somebody go crazy doing that. That'd be too terrible. Oh, yeah, I'm scared. Yeah, the I'm, Detroit I'm one scared. with T Grizzly. Yeah, that would go crazy. I wish they would bring back like, rap video games and stuff like that like I, I miss all that cool stuff like to me that was like what made it fun is like all that interactivity and like i felt like i was connected with all these artists because it's like 
it was so many different ways, like between the magazines, the games, and like yeah. seeing on TV. And it's like I don't and know why it's like not as much like that. You know what I mean? It's funny because you feel less connected now. When we have the internet. Yeah, it's like you know more about the person, but less connected in a way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Def Jam Vendetta, boy. I used Whoa. to go crazy on that drink. Whoa. I don't think I ever played it, but I do remember it. Nah, that was my joint. And, I mean, it's not music related, but kind of, because Shaq was a rapper. But Shaq Fu, all-time oh, classic. Yeah. Incredible. No, uh, not for nothing. Shaq was not bad. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Shaq has some songs with some people. Of course, he was Shaq at the time, so he can do a song with whoever. But he did a song with the Fushnikins, which was great. I think that's mm-hmm. what started him off. My man did a song with Biggie. Uh, you can't stop the rain, and the sample to that is <laughs> booming on the internet right now, <laughs> bro. I gotta Same watch sample. that show, man. I still gotta watch it. I feel like oh, I you didn't so watch much. it. I still haven't watched watch it yet. It. You mm-hmm. gotta watch it, bro. I'm mad that episode seven. No spoilers. No spoilers. We're talking about BMF, by the way. Mm-hmm. No spoilers. But episode seven. Uh, did you see mm-hmm. Fifty going off on stars? Yeah, I saw something, because but I didn't understand what was going on. I th- I think they were supposed to have like a bye week mm-hmm. this week. But somebody from Star somehow Stars put out the episode for like three hours and they took it down. Oh, you know that's a that's ripped. I think yeah, so yeah. the internet is done for. Yeah, if you have fifty went hand, apparently Eminem is in this episode too. Oh, that's and crazy. and it's the episode that fifty directed. So I'm like, oh fam, why'd y'all mess up on the, oh, the that episode one. that this man directed? Somebody getting and fired. he was proud of it. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> what kind of text do like go find guy? <laughs> go find God. <laughs> That's what 50 about to take us. <laughs> Make Jesus your buddy. Uh man. Uh, yeah, but that's that was that was messed up. But I, I can't wait to watch it. I guess it comes out uh this Sunday because I didn't catch it on the three hours it was out. I look for it too. Mm. I guess I just look for it too early that day or something like that. Let's see. Uh Wu Tang game was ill. Damn, I forgot about that game. It was crazy. They too. did have a game. Bro, that was a good a man. I wish it was stuff like that would happen, man. Like I wouldn't be mad at like a TDE versus like, you know what I'm saying? Like how Marvel versus Capcom, like that would be so fire, bro. You know what I mean? That would. Uh, hey, somebody got to bring it back. Maybe even DJ Mustard. Mustard's a good one. Mustard's a good one. Yeah. That's a fact. All the club scenes. Yeah. 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 Somebody said I want them to go back to the radio station format. Dang. Oh, yeah, no. GTA, I feel you. Yeah. Dang, Quintino said Moonwalker. Boy, that's classic. Whoa. Uh, boy, you brought it back with that one. That's Whoa. crazy. <laughs> you wilding for that one. Damn, Def Jam Fight for New York? I don't remember. I just remember Jeff, Def Jam Vendetta. Yeah, I don't remember the Fight for New York one. It's, 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 I can't remember. I might know it if I see it. Uh, let's yeah. see. Bro, have you seen this? So Focus Right got an AI that it determines whatever the best uh, reverb for your sound is. Nah, that's far. Yeah, I wonder how much it is. Yeah, I don't know subscription. How how good it is. Yeah, it's it's wait, we talking plug in, right? Yeah. So you just put it on it, it. it, I guess it just it's kind of like a neutron, like it'll scan it and then it'll be like, oh, this is what we suggest. Um, I think that's fire. Even if it, I don't know how it sounds, but just the concept alone is fire. Like it's no way around AI. Yeah, it's just going to take over. So I think it's dope. Even with the EQ, sometimes it's cool. Sometimes I use it if I'm being lazy on certain stuff, but it's like, I just feel like it's like, I don't know, man. Because in mixing, I like the wrongness in certain stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Not wrong, but I like the... Sometimes I, I want it to be janky. I don't want it to be like clean and pop. And I feel like a lot of those those AIs, it's like set to a very, I don't want to say pop, but it's like a very... It's very clean. Yeah, very it's like very... Yeah, it's too much like that. It's like, man, I need to dirty this joint up, bro. Like, stop being yeah. so, you know. So I think the the thing to look at when it comes to that is the people get the technology down. And even if it's people in the super clean, poppy space, they get it down. And then eventually, since it'll be open source technology, more people will learn it. And then you get people... Mm-hmm. Of your community that get into sure. it, and then they hit you with the with the janky joints and the dirty, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. then they make it like that. that makes but sense. 
yeah, I, I think so. That's why I think that it's cool. A lot of this AI stuff that's coming out now, a lot of it is bad in its first inception, like a lot of new technology. But I'm just happy because I'm like, let's hurry it up and let's get past the part where it's bad or where it's only catered to one audience and let's get it to where it's like widespread and now this type of person can get into it and this person that's more like me can get into it right. and now now we really pop it that's real yeah like i'm pretty sure like the first like chord generator type stuff they they generate a lot of happy birthday chords oh yeah i'm sure it's everything sounded yeah. like uh like beethoven facts yeah all of that and then you know it, you get into it now and there's so many of them out there that you know it's just whatever yo they should make those like casio keyboards but all the songs that comes with it are like cooler songs because i feel like sure. everybody i know knows uh knows for else it's like oh, that yeah. it's like the one song everybody knows and it's like bro this joint is so trash dog. like let's, yeah. let's let's you know get the kids a little bit something better you know what i mean a little more melodies you know what i mean facts and shout out to that song though. It's one of the it's one of the only songs you could everyone starts out sounding like you don't know how to play because that's how the song starts. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sound like you just like I don't know if gotcha. this person's good or bad. <laughs> we'll see after these first couple notes, though. It's like after he switched, if after he go to the four, we're gonna see how it goes. Exactly. Like, ooh, mm, trash hands. Let's see. Um Shaq was horrible at rapping and acting. Kazan was a wild movie. Okay, Kazan was a wild movie. I ain't saying nothing about about the acting. I've never seen a Shaq movie. I'll be honest with you. Kazan was a wild movie. We and okay, this is not production related, but that whole Sinbad thing is so wild about how that movie is, and it confuses and makes my head hurt. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, I don't even know. It Sinbad claims he never did this movie where he dresses up like a genie. But as a kid, I distinctly remember this. And it's like a thing that nobody can figure out of why he you don't he, talk about it. He swears up and down that he didn't, he doesn't, and you can't find clips of it. And he did a he did a spoof of him doing it as a genie. He made a, a whole like spoof video of it. I feel like I remember this somehow. Yeah, I can't remember what, what it is, but I just think it's so weird. Cause I know Shaq had it, and people get that confused, and it was like Shazam and Kazam. But yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's kind of like that. <laughs> you remember that dude Angelus that sounded like Jay Z? Oh, and definitely. And it's like that mixtape just disappeared. It's like yo, it's kind of yeah, there. It's a, it was it's there, a few but it's not Jay Z. Few Jay Z clones that that went away. Man, quick. Yeah, that was. It's a dude named Sicario that sounded just like. Oh that. yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's a fact. That's a fact. So, so I got a question here. And it's just just a pondering question. Mm. Is making beats every day really a good thing? Mm. And I'm going to let you know, I really don't have a stance on this. It was just a random question that popped into my head. So it's it's for the chat. Yeah, I don't I, I know I can't do it every day. I used to. I used to, bro. That was like, bro, that's all I did. Five, six beats a day. Pretty much seven days a week, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, I can't do it no more. I feel like I it, it's good to have breaks because I feel like you can clear your mind, you get different inspiration. I feel like sometimes when you too locked in, you just kind of doing the same things over and over. It's good to kind of go ca- catch a vibe, you know what I mean? Right. Like you, I feel like. Well, this is how I think now, being at this part of my life. I feel like you got to live life. You you sure. got to take breaks to actually have a life. But I was the same way back in the day, like all day, every day, making beats, and you know, and that's that's really it. But one could argue the point of I got to get it, I got to go hard, you know, no days off, blah blah blah, hustle hard, and I I totally understand that. But then there's the other side, like I was just talking about, like you got to live your life and take breaks. Or people could argue like your artistry comes from your experiences in life sure. is part of what makes you. So if you're not really getting out there living any life, does your artistry suffer? Sure. So, yeah, I don't know the, yeah. the right answer. And I'm curious to see what the people in the chat think. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the question is, is making beats every day really a good thing? And then, okay, let me ask you this. Is like not necessarily making, creating the beat, but like say you're like sending stuff out or you're tweaking stuff, does that count towards... Is it all grouped together or is that a separate thing? Because 
I feel like good it's part. good to kind of break that up. Because I, I have days where I just like send stuff out. That's all I'm going to do. It's like I know this whole day and I'm just networking and I'm sending stuff out. That's all I do the whole day. I don't think about making beats. It's just like, unless right. it's like, oh, I, I forgot to tag this beat. Let me tag this joint up. Let me, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I got this one little cowbell too loud. Let me turn this down before I send this out. It's like little stuff, you know? Well, I'm going to say no. I'm going to just say ma- like actually making beats. Oh, okay. Like yeah. making beats every day. Yeah, because that You're other right. stuff, while that technically is, I don't know. I'm the one that posed the question, so I guess I'm just gonna make up the house rules and be right. like, nah, that's so, that's separate. But like, yeah, physically, like just making beats mm-hmm. every day. Somebody oh, so, said they think it's good for beginners. Okay, that's yeah, boy. I think that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I think in the beginning you gotta try to just get them hours in. Then once you kind of get that experience, you could kind of, but you still gotta practice. Practice. <laughs> We talking about practice. We talk about practice. Talk yeah, yeah. Uh, I know I can't make ten to fifteen beats a week like I used to. Hey, I feel you on that, fam. Oh man, those were good times. They were good times, bro. I wish I didn't Whoa. have. I wish my responsibilities understood <laughs> the good times that they were. Nah, yo, life was carefree. You just sit and make beats all day long. Any well, I- pizza. I'd be having to come down here and sneak and make beats, bro. Bro, I get up early in the morning so I can make beats. I try to make a beat before I take my daughter to school. And then I'd be up late at night. As soon as I put her to bed, I'm like, oh, time to go cook up. You got a plan in advance. Uh, On the 16th, between 5 and 10.30, I will be unavailable. I'll be making beats. Bro, I got a date. Like, woohoo, Fruity Loops. (laughs) Facts. You got a schedule there. We getting in it. Yo, one of my homies hit me uh, the other day. He had just got his his uh, new spot set up and all that. He's like, oh, all night beat making session like back in the day. Hit him up next day. How the all night beat making session go? Got faded, end up listening to a whole bunch of Dilla beats and fell asleep. <laughs> like, yep, 10 30. Like back in the day, could you? Yeah, it's probably early as hell, too. Dude, 10 30. Uh, uh, you thought you was finna take a zip to the face and just be the most creative person Not you could possibly care. be for, from sundown to sun up. <laughs> no. Dog, that last time I went to LA and I was working with Diego, I was so hurt, bro. I was drinking espresso like it was like a pre suns dog, trying to stay away. <laughs> I was so tired, dog. I'm like, bro, I'm not used to these hours, dog. I ain't been awake oh, like this in a long time. Yeah. I don't no, miss I those hurt. hours. Bro, yeah. I was hurt, bro. I'm like, I'm bro, I've been making beats for 12 hours right now. I'm tired, bro. It's past my bedtime. I'm jet lag. I want to go home. Bro, I will say, if you are 20 something, that now is your time for all that oh, no. type of bro. I remember the um making beats all night, all just forever, and then getting mm-hmm. a four o'clock in the morning phone call. It's like, yo, can you go to the airport and be on a flight at six? I'm like, <laughs> Of course, can I? I'm talking about yeah, mm-hmm. let's go. Now I'm like, when today, this week? I need nah. a three week notice, sir. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this, this, a day. this thing's going on. I have appointments, <laughs> all types of things. Did you what see you my calendar? About? What are you talking about, sir? Get out of this here. Is, we're speaking so nonsensical. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. yeah. Dang. Hey, yeah, I missed okay. them days. Hey, to the metaverse, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you so, so you sent me something um, interesting about the metaverse yesterday. Do you remember what it was? Because I actually copied it and pasted it. I, I have no clue. Uh, let, let me pull it up. Um, oh, so uh, it says the metaverse going to make the whole you can only be an artist if you're this age thing disappear. That was deep and mm. kind of true. That is true. If everyone's virtual, you could look like however you want to look like. Nobody would know that you're a producer and you. That's gonna be. And you could be a like, you could be a rapper. Like, you know how many of these older rappers about to be out here, bro? Yep. Hmm. Oh, you could be whatever. That whatever in the meta. That's gonna yeah. be wow. But that's. That is kind of cool, especially mm-hmm. in the the industry that we're in. Like oh, ageism yeah. is a thing. Like oh, it's, yeah, a, it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Getting older is not 
not really celebrated. I think the mm-hmm. tides are turning on that a little bit. Right. Like, but for the most part, ageism is a thing, and it, mm-hmm. this will alleviate a lot of that. Unless you have to talk. Well, if you're if you're of a certain age, you're gonna sound old. Like, what age are, are you when you just start to get the old the old man old lady voice? I think it's not until you're like late sixties, early seventies, though. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's post old man voice. strength, but like. You know what I mean? You go through the old man strength phase, and then I feel like that's when it starts to, to get in there. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I don't know. If you ever Damn. had an old man like 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 hit your arm or something? You're like, bro, why are you so strong, dog? Like, facts. Oh, did you just do a hundred push-ups? Why are you calm down, bro? <laughs> I I grew up in a world where nothing was automatic. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't even have power stirring. That's how I got these guns, son. <laughs> bro, you ever drove a car without power stirring? Oh my Boy, god! Yo, this part what? of my arm, dog. Strength is on a thou wow, dog. Come on, dog. Bam. Drive with your whole body. You gotta, you gotta, it look like you about to hit the whip. You gotta <laughs> fast. Yo. And you know you gotta make that left. <laughs> you start preparing for that left way right. back there. You Ain't no way to hit, hit the no, no, no. First of all, this this shit don't exist. You mm-hmm. oh yeah. <clears throat> you gotta you okay. got a hook. You gotta wear a glove so you can get the, the grip, you know what I mean. That's a fact. Yo, in one turn, mad, oh, mad yeah. motions. I'm Dog. doing this like 10 times just to make one left. Dog, I had a Ford Taurus SES, bro, with the uh with a power steering leak. Boy, Ooh. I pour that power steering in there. I got like 30 minutes to go where I gotta go, bro. It's like, bro, you got you just gotta make it, you know what I mean? You gotta keep the power steering in the trunk, you know what I mean? Yep, just pour it in there, bro. I had a uh maroon bronco. Ford Bronco is one of my first cars. Teenager. Power steering leak. Same deal. Fam, that truck felt like it weighed a million pounds. Trying to turn that thing. That's what we do. We fire on the drum pads. It's like all this this muscle. Crazy. It's immaculate. It's like, sir, you're the tennis champion. What do you, how do you train? It's like, yeah. So you see that, that, uh, that Mazda, that that Mazda 6 in the back? I ain't got no power steering, cuz. We just do donuts all day. That's how we train. I poke a hole in your NPC. Stop yeah. playing. Let's see. <laughs> uh, Sam man said, I'm gonna uh, be 40 in three weeks. I feel grumpy about it. Hey, man. Hey, they you, don't. You gotta embrace it, bro. Hey, you're not old until, uh, I don't know what age, but it ain't 40. You're not mm. old until. I'm gonna give. I don't even know, man. Because when I grew up, old was old. Mm. Like, I never looked at somebody 35 and was like, yo, you old as shit. <laughs> you know, when Word. I grew up, I think old, I think like old lady that went to church with your grandma. Yeah. Like, that was old to me, so mm-hmm. I don't I don't even know. Yeah, but hey, man, real. shout out to you, brother. Shout out to you. Yeah, I'm uh, just ready for the, in the metaverse, it's going to be like a grandpa, but he's going to sound like Playboy Cardi. He really going to be like 80. <laughs> But he's gonna like be on some super lit shit. I can't wait, bro. Something's something's nasty. It's gonna be sugar daddies <laughs> everywhere. Sugar daddies just raining NFTs right. on young. <laughs> it's gonna be funny because the the grandpa rapper like Playboy Cardi. He just go he gonna mess up because he gonna make a reference to something that kids don't know. He right. gonna talk about like mortgages or something. Penny talk- candy. <laughs> Interest rates. What? <laughs> like what are you talking about? Did he say four hundred one k's? <laughs> the challenger explosion what is that oh uh, man <laughs> 401 case 401 case 401 case oh <laughs> uh, man i forgot i got this air horn uh, yeah. oh man i'm in a, uh, i'm in a, a wild sarcastic mood if y'all can't tell uh, that's, that's 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 dope um oh i had a quick uh a quick tip i saw somebody online a little frustrated about about something. So I just wanted to throw this out there for anybody that needs to hear it. If someone doesn't hit you back on the internet, don't take it personal. I was about to say punch him. <laughs> punch him. Punch him. No. What going to get some wall put crazy going on their lips? Yeah. Yeah, I know so. Yeah, but yeah, if somebody if it like if you submit something to somebody or you just reach out to somebody and even if they like I'll hit you back and they don't hit you back. Don't take it personal, especially like if it's somebody oh. that's up there. Look, people are busy. Sometimes people just never really planned on hitting you back. 
that's a yeah. that's a part of life that a lot of people um I get confused when people are confused about mm-hmm. certain things. Like, yo, do you think that you're just the greatest person in the world that every time somebody tells you something is 100% true? Sure. Not. It's not. Yeah, they're, they're telling you to hit you back. Some people just never never planned on hitting you back, ever. But just don't take it personal. Just move on. Just, just move on. And that means you're not taking enough shots out there. If you're mad about that, you're, just not, you're not shooting enough shots. So get out there and shoot. You know, the world is your court. Get the buckets. Oh man, hold on. Might have to. Yeah. I might have to. Might uh, are, are you gonna two, you gonna leave me here? Just to, two seconds. Just to, two seconds. Just sorry. To freestyle. Sorry. 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 BRB. Bet. All right. Sorry, sorry. So, so young Triz, uh, he, he he left me to to check out my hosting skills. So what I'm actually gonna do is I did say in that video I did earlier that I was gonna be giving away some prizes. I'm gonna give away some some free. Uh, I'm gonna give away some sample packs and things. To random people. So I'm gonna do a little hip hop trivia. Uh and whoever answers, whoever answers first, you'll get a sample pack. And I'll give out a couple of them. So if you're ready, give me a one, 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 and then I'll I'll start. Uh how do you get over that fear? Oh, that's a that's a good question. <laughs> how do you get over that fear of rejection? So hey, listen. You don't, man. You just gotta learn to deal with it. Just gotta learn how to how to deal with it. Furnace was good. So listen. All right, we got some one one ones in the building. All right, I'm start out with some hip hop trivia. I'm gonna keep it fairly easy. Let me remember something. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay, and the first person that answers wins. What does the acronym KRS One mean? We doing we doing hip hop trivia. Woo. Yeah, we, we doing hip hop trivia. Because I said I was gonna give away some prizes, so as you left, that was the the perfect time for me to start hip hop trivia. So I got that boy hit that you saying both. Jeez, I seen you. I see you out of breath, fam. You're gonna be the old rapper <laughs> in, the, in the metaverse, man. I was like, I was gonna not answer it, but I knew what it was. It's a package for the for the other business, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Ooh. OG Bobby Johnson. <laughs> You're almost not quite. So what's the trip? What's the question? Uh what does the acronym uh KRS1 stand for? Um Ooh, you can't answer. I was trying to think of something funny. <laughs> I was trying to think of something oh, funny. In that case, I was trying to think of something funny. <laughs> In that case, have at it. OG trying. Bobby Johnson, you did correct that word. How ever oh, y'all, y'all close. Y'all close. I didn't say what does KRS1 stand for. I said carrot. I didn't say what does KRS stand for. I said what does KRS1 stand for? The acronym mm-hmm. KRS1. I just got a fat finger. I mistyped. This is good. And I got I'll 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 come up with like two more. Hey, there we go. There, who was that? Shadow. I had no idea. Now it's reigned supreme over nearly everyone. Yes, indeed. It's quite the acronym. Quite the acronym there. All right, bet. Shadow, DM me, and um, I'll hit you with a mystery pack. By the way, before the second question, and Tristan, you might have something to say about this too. Uh, on the site now, I'm offering mystery packs. Hey. And basically what that is, it, it's a product. If you go to the site right now, you'll see the latest mm-hmm. product is called a mystery pack. You purchase it. It's at a nice price right now because I'm, tr- I'm trying it out. And you purchase it and you will just get a random pack mm-hmm. from the library. I think I'm up to, I don't know how many sample packs. And you'll just get mm-hmm. a random whatever one. The guarantee here is whatever you pay for, whatever you get is going to be, it's going to cost way more than what you pay for it's yeah that's that's just how that works so and it's a great way for you to use sounds that you might not have necessarily used or right. you know just to get or to get familiar zone. yeah or get familiar with the the library uh that we have to offer at a at a decent price you know and it's it's just a cool it's a fun way to stock up your sound library because you're going to tend to buy the same things all the time but if you just get the random like oh damn i never even thought of using let's say orchestra pit i never right. you know and 
it's not only limited to like small products. Like I said, it's anything. So it could be a bundle. It could be mm. the deluxe version of something. Uh, somebody the other day got cassette drums too. And that's actually four entire sample packs that come together. And Brr. I have no control over what you get. I just set it up. <laughs> so right. it's not like, I'm mm. like, oh, let me just send you this. Or let me right. send you that. It's, it's truly random. I don't know what you got until after you got it because i'll ask you what you got right so and so yeah that that's what it is and Triz, i don't know if you i set it up you implemented you, 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 you yeah, set you it show, up too? you showed me yeah you showed me i set it up okay so yeah, yeah so yeah we both got the we both got the mystery packs on the site so this is that's cool mm. <laughs> so i just <laughs> wanted to point that out bobby john said are you doing loot boxes now you know what's crazy is yeah uh, we had bought some <laughs> loot boxes yeah i was like hey i got an idea i was like oh snap, that's pretty cool Facts. Mr. Sam Aggressor says I, says I have them all. I, I understand. I'm actually working on some uh, some new stuff. And in, in the time that I said I was going to be off for the rest of the year, I actually want to work on new products that may or may not come out before the end of the year, just for people like you to have everything. Because y'all hit me up like, yo, what I got that? everything. And I run stuff to where, you know, like a sale or something. And right. people are like, yo, I got everything. And I feel bad for y'all because y'all like the, the number one people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Real. So, okay, second hip hop question for, and, and these are going to be real hip hop, hip hop questions. Um, got a good one. I right, think something funny for this one. All right, hold on. I'm going to think of something funny. All right, let's go. What was the first posse cut to feature Fife Dog from a Tribe Called Quest? <laughs> Yeah, you ain't got you ain't got nothing funny for that. No, I had one, but it's a little too, <laughs> a little too, a little too much spice. Yeah, too much spice. Um, say the question one more time. Hold on. Yeah, DM me on uh, IG Shadow. So, what was the first posse cut to feature Fife Dog from a tribe called Quest? Yeah, buddy. That's a that's one for you. Hmm. Yep. And I'm gonna do um I'm gonna do one more after this. Uh Mr. Sam and Griffin says scenario. That would have been everyone's first guess, but that is actually incorrect. But that was my first guess too. Hmm. Yep. Yep. That that would have been the first thing that I thought of too. I have an idea, but I don't think it's right. So I'm just, just gonna, gonna be that kid in the, in the class that doesn't raise his hand. Yeah, L-O-N-S, nope, that's actually the name of a group. Oh, wait, Solo Beats said Buddy, and I gave away the I gave away the hint when I said, yeah, Buddy. Yes, it is actually Buddy on uh, De La Souls, Three Feet High and Rising. You, uh, you actually going to win a pack too, Solo Beats. Just DM me on Instagram. Damn. Y'all, you uh, get a pack. You get a pack. <laughs> All right. That's dope. That's dope. I'm going to do one more. Let's see. All right. Uh, no one's going to get this. Listen. The hip hop classic 93 to infinity by Souls of Mischief. The first bars are dial the seven digits, call up Bridget. Who can give me the next, the next sentence? That's kind of a tough one. Nelson Flavor Flav? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Bridget Nelson and Flavor Flav was wild. Yeah, that was such a weird time in history, dog. I ain't gonna lie. That's what I just I just hit my TV the first time I saw. It. Like, yo, what's wrong with this Joe? They mixing yeah. up the chick from old Beverly mm-hmm. uh with, with the Beverly Hills cop Joe with uh Flavor Flav, little mm-hmm. public enemy video. It's messed up. My TV Why are they kissing? <laughs> Why are you like, making out? This is weird. What is going on? By the way, if that question is too tough, just go ahead and type me. Type me a too tough. Yeah. Yeah. Are you? Yeah. That that was a that was just a wild one that I that I pulled out there. I have. Dial to seven digits. Call up Bridget. And the next line is hilarious. <laughs> What's that now? Give me the give me the <laughs> give me the sentence. Give me the sentence. Oh man. I have no idea this one. <laughs> did, did you see it? Why are we waiting on the answer for this? Did you see on uh, Drake Chance where Kanye was like, I'm sorry, backpackers? 
Oh, <laughs> he said he posed as a backpacker, bro. And he threw the most shots at Tyler. Well, I know Tyler was like, "What did I do, bro?" Fam, yeah, he came. He spun the block. It came bro, back for Tyler. Really I don't know what Tyler did to this man, but it's personal, dog. Uh, yeah, he he. Is that right? From Lee. So Lee, I actually needed the sentence before that. Ooh. Ooh, he's getting close. Dial the seven digits. Call up Bridget. Some, some, some. She got friends, so I could dig it. See, you gave me the line that came after that one. Ah, he's just close. Lee might, Lee might get it. Quintino might get it too. I'm I'm yeah. really confused, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that oh, that yeah. kind of backpackers thing had me weak, bro. I was like, bro, why is he doing this man so dirty, dog? Like, Damn, my man doubled down on the I never liked your raps. Oh yeah, and then wait was like, oh yeah, I was just with that nigga. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy. It's like, oh yeah, I did. He gonna really fight me? I was like, oh man, Kanye yeah, come to your house for Thanksgiving and then shit on you publicly on Black Friday, bro. Because you saw he was just with Big Sean and Hit Boy. And then yep. he did that. I was like, bro, Kanye is also he on one, bro. Facts Hilarious bro. though. Facts Hilarious. Though. He had a couple Facts moments though. on that one where I died laughing. I was Yo. like really cracking up. Hilarious. Hilarious. So I don't think anyone's gonna get this. Yeah, I think it's a rap. Nah, it's it's a rap. It's a rap. Someone said they already said it. I don't see it in there. I don't even see it. I don't even see it in there. I don't even see your name in there, right? Yeah. All right, man. First rap uh, duo to win a Grammy. Oh, I oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah, you probably uh, you might know this one. You Wait, know, hold on. I think is this him? Uh. Oh no, he actually had a question that we didn't get to. But anyway, go ahead. I don't know. People saying they typed it, but I can't see it. I don't know if my chat's acting weird. Are we are we tripping, bud? Son? Yeah, Fuck my chat is you. not showing. I just seen someone said I just typed it. OG Bobby Johnson. It's not showing on my chat. Damn, it's not showing on my chat either. What's going on? Damn. Diddy and Big the first? No, nah, no, nah, not Diddy and Big. Hey, no. I know that. I actually know this one. Well, in the meantime, while people answer, either one of the questions that I asked. Oh, I see your answer. Wait, hold on. Let me scroll back down. Yep. Ding, ding, ding. Bobby Johnson, you win. DM me. Ah, uh, Lee, you almost got it. You almost had it. Bobby Johnson weighed in before you. Uh, yeah, Bobby Johnson, uh, DM me on Instagram and you get a pack. And uh, that's it. I'm not asking any more questions, but if anybody can come through with that Souls of Mischief line, uh, I'll give you a pack too. Uh, dial to seven digits, call up Bridget. What's after that? said Avalon Major. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Uh, oh, so Avalon Major said, this is a question, but I did see his name. While it's still valuable, uh, do you think it would be foolish to sell an MPC X to get an MPC Studio? Personally, yes. Only because I think the... Uh, I don't know a lot about the studio, but I'm also a person that has a million NPCs. So it depends on your reasons for wanting the studio. Is it just because it's newer or is it a feature or something about it that you see over the X? And if so, let me know what that is. And then I could probably answer it better, but just at face value, I, I would rock with the X. I would just keep the X. Yeah. Real life. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, 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 um. See summertime still be played at the barbecue. Facts. 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 Yeah. Aren't all the new NPCs the same? Yes and no. Uh, the same software, yes. Do they function all the same? Yes. The only difference is <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is size, which size and portability are mm -hmm. equal there. And um access to certain features like for instance if you have an npc touch which i have one of those as well mm. that's where they just went total touch screen it's not a whole bunch of buttons whereas like the x and 
a few other NPCs I got. They they have dedicated buttons for functions, which I like better right. personally. I like the ones that have more buttons on it. So anything mm. that that can fit the size and portability joint mm. and have all the buttons on it, I'm a fan of, which is mm. why I like the NPC one, even though I don't use it that much. It, it's my favorite NPC of as of late. Um, but they are the same, but they they aren't the same. Mm. Physically, they aren't the same. Bro, do people use the arcade? Is that what the thing was? The Fruity Loops one? What was that one called? Remember Fruity Loops had that little controller? I feel like you got one. Oh, the Crossfire. Crossfire, that's what I was. I don't know why I wanted to call it Arcade Fire. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the name of that group. Uh Fire in the Arcade. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What but, uh, I, bro, I haven't seen anybody use one of those in a long time. No, I I have one and I use it as like a mini uh push i I modded it to my ableton Mm. so it's just like a little baby push Mm. because it got those 64 64 pads and then i just modded the buttons to do ableton push type things so that's what i used it for but if you see any of my videos it's Mm. actually on top of a speaker underneath of the tv in my studio just looking nice as decoration Mm. yeah but shout out to them for sending me that let's see the new mpc uh (laughs) studio other than not being standalone and having uh, as many buttons is essentially the same functionality for 300. It's where you can fix up an X for 1800. Oh, um, for, for less than 300. Hey, I mean, if, if price point is a, not a concern, but a factor, then I mean, yeah, of course it makes more sense. If portability is a factor, of course it makes more sense. Um, to me, dedicated buttons equals a better workflow because you introduce muscle memory but that's also if you're just going to leave it in your studio you have Mm. the space and you're not going to take it anywhere i would say stay with the x but if you need it to be portable and you want to grab something at a smaller price like for instance if you sold your x and then copped the studio you'll probably have some Mm. extra money uh left over depending on how much you sold your x for makes all the sense in the world to me but like i said Mm. between the two right now where i am i would i would rock with the x Gotcha. Yeah. Lisa, it's kind of you really gave Tyler a whole career. I'd be mad too. I still don't understand what that beef was. I, I missed that part of like what the beef originated from. It was the uh the fact that he was so gun ho with working with the Democrats. And he when Kanye was doing the MAGA hat thing, he kept saying, uh, you brother, you need to come back home type deal. And I guess Kanye uh, just really didn't appreciate it because he thinks that Tyler was a democratic puppet. That's a, that's the same beef he had with Big Sean um, and John, John Legend. Legend. And yeah, and Big Sean. So, but for some reason, the, the smoke for Talib was a little more <laughs> it smoked paprika. Hey. It wasn't regular paprika, it was smoked paprika. Talib, Talib, lyrics stick Talib. to your rib, you know? Yeah, yeah Talib getting jabbed in the rib. Man, <laughs> bruh, like, dog, leave that man alone, fam. Jeez. Dog, did you see this? Uh, there's a clip and it's Zaytoven talking about uh, him having a side with Jeezy. I mean, over with Gucci over Jeezy because nah. basically uh, he was just saying like uh, they both wanted the record. So icy, right? The the record did really popped off both of them, Jeezy and Gucci. And he's, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was like a beef because they both wanted to put out the record. And um, I think that's kind of what the Jeezy uh, Gucci beef originated. And mm-hmm. um Zaytoven kind of had to pick a side and he was talking about why he went with Gucci because he's like bro Gucci's at my house every day like he know my mama we build and we record and he's like no offense to Jeezy but I don't really know Jeezy at the time he didn't know Jeezy like that and I was like it's mm-hmm. it's dope to see that loyalty between a producer and like an artist and then like yes. you know just understanding that bond of like yo I build with this person and it's cool to see because I feel like not that Zaytoven and Jeezy wouldn't have been a thing but I don't think it would have been the same like impact is like well I don't know you never know but like that yeah. Gucci and Zaytoven impact is like crazy, dog. Like it's crazy. That, that was a Batman and Robin one-two combo mm-hmm. peanut butter and jelly type joint. Not for nothing, Jeezy and Shorty Ray was a good match. Too. Oh, I love it, bro. Yeah, I hated that. I, 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 that fell I apart. think it worked out. Yeah, well, when it was when it first started mm-hmm. and when it was working, that you know certain things like I can't like you said you can't call what Zaytoven and Jeezy right. would have been, but I feel like it worked out better. With mm-hmm. Jeezy and Shorty Red, I just feel like that's a just a better match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, he's going crazy. Back so, shout out. 
Um, let's see. <laughs> Kanye right about that. Yeah. Uh, Gucci Mane, the light show. Facts. Facts. Gucci Mane, the flag, y'all. Oh, let me see what other questions we what other questions we got. Because we had some good ones. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Somebody had a question about some kicks. And I think the answer I'm about to give is about to be kind of kind of wild. It's about kicks. Yeah. Oh, they should they should get the Jordan ones. Classic. They never go out of style. Bridge. Yeah. The bridge jumps. Yeah, <laughs> uh oh yeah. Okay. So best plugin for kick drum loudness and thickness in reason eleven. Okay, so we're gonna take the reason eleven part out of it. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're not doing. I, I, <laughs> Come on, I just, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to think of how you actually would do it in the past. I don't remember. Trizzle, Trizzle laughs about reason. And anytime reason is brought up, Trizzle go laugh. But like, take so take it. I take Me? the reason eleven part out of it because um, you know any plugin that's gonna work there will work yeah. anywhere. Now, now, yeah, now, mm. and. Yo, not for nothing, I'm going to go with an old school favorite, Sausage Fattener. So, somebody might let me have it for that, but, hey. Classic. You know a good one? Another one that's in the tuck? I ain't used it in a minute, bro, but that question made me think of it. It it was a couple of them. The Transient Master and the Transient Shaper. Ooh. You remember the little Transient Shaper? It's like the little tiny one? Bro. Ooh, wait, the waves joint, the waves one? No, it's it's so I think Native has one that's like Transit oh, yeah. Master, but then it's the one that's like a it starts with an S, the plugin company. It's called SPO. Yeah, bro, and it's SPL. like Transient Transient Master or one. No, Transient Shaper is the one, and it looked like yep. a little bootleg plugin, but that joint worked so good, bro. That joint was fire. That, that was my uh, Cubase days. Mm-hmm. I want to say I was using that joint. Yep, but All they had that little profile. that little. Uh, to the kicks, you know what I mean? The transient, Facts. the transient master is fire. Facts. Woo! And we took it back. That's yeah, the old man, man plug-in talk for you right man. there. I remember T-Rex. <laughs> Not T-Rex, though. When I used to load up Edderall Orchestra. Let me tell you something. <laughs> little, little Edderall, little, little, little Vanguard with the T-Rex. Ooh. Oh, Thank my God. God. Little, little, what was it? The uh, Dre Mendes drums. <laughs> Little two delicious drums. Oh, little HHS drum, <laughs> dark child. Little HHS throwing in the T Rex, blend it on up, throw some L2 on the end. Ooh. Now, you give me that big fish audio. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, you should see me and your grandma getting it in the basement. Man. Oh. Oh, oh old man, God. plug in talk. That's funny. Yo, that's, that's funny. Hilarious. That's a skit. That's a, <laughs> that's a that's a skit right there, buddy. Yeah, you don't want to see me when I load a battery at three. That marching band kit, <laughs> I'm the king of R&B, okay? I'm Yo. The, if you want every beat to sound like a 2005 Dark Child production. <laughs> Mo to the... <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we stupid. Yo, lunching uh, is, what, is, is what we are. We are lunching, bro. That's uh, funny. That's a, that was a good one. Oh, Ajax okay. Rose. Facts. Uh, okay, so here's a, here's a question too. What are some key things that beginners should get down first? Uh, or what are, let me, let me change that. Mm. What are some key things that beginners should focus on? Okay. The first thing I'm going to say, and I'm mm. always an advocate for this, trying to develop your own style and mm-hmm. sound 100 percent. even if it's barring i mean let's face it we all started mimicking the greats right and you're gonna have to do that but then you take it and then you start putting your own special mm-hmm. twist on it and the advice i would give to a beginner to do that is outside of just being creative with the stuff that you already know how to do play your stuff for as many people as possible and the things that people say that sounds dope or that's dope or you I like when you do X, Y and Z, when you hear that two, three, four five times, do that more. Right. And now that becomes your sound. So as people start saying, oh, you do this dope, you do that dope, you do this dope, just become the person that does that a lot. And then that's how uh, one of the easiest ways to start building a sound. That's right. I say 
Man, just learn to, at least the basics of music theory. Because you don't have to be great at it, but at least know it, it helps to know the language. You know what I mean? It, mm. It's certain stuff you're going to want to do, and it's like, like I could always peck it and like figure it out, but it would just take such a long time. And there's like the more knowledge I got about music theory and how I could just kind of see it's like now I could like I hear it in my head and I could boop, 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 you know what I mean? It's just like nothing. But at a point, yeah. I feel like that would always throw me off of like I would hear it one way and I couldn't figure out how to translate from my brain to in the doll. But so I would just, you know, the basic scales, chords, knowing what it is, practice your inversions, you know what I mean? A little basic stuff, but it keeps you on your toes. That's what I would yes. focus on. Yeah. And, uh, get your workflow down. Yeah. And what I mean by getting your workflow down, of mm-hmm. course, you're going to develop ways to do things, but be able to do things correctly and quickly at the mm-hmm. same time. Work on, work on developing both of those aspects of your workflow at the same time. And the main training ground for that or, or where you'll know if you did right mm. is if you ever get into a session live in the studio and you got to cook up that's when preparation meets success you mm. know what i mean because you know what you're doing you're good at it and you can do it quickly because mm. nobody's really trying to sit around and wait an hour for you to get this core progression down yeah, you know right. what i mean so mm. yeah no that's real talk yes sir uh, speaking of waiting an hour to get a chord progression down, I was thinking about <clears throat> something the other day. I think I asked the question on here a few weeks ago, like, do certain people prefer working with the artist in the studio or working remotely and sending beats? Mm-hmm. So as I'm thinking about those two things, I'm like, well, what are the arguments for people wanting to work remotely instead mm-hmm. of working with the artist? And the main thing that I thought of that used to be a it used to drive me crazy is being in a studio with an artist that rushes you. Oh yeah. Sam. And then they take forever. They can't get the one line out. You like, bro, you've been rushing me all day. You can't get this line out. Fam. Cause some artists don't know how to write to or work with a piece of the beat. Mm-hmm. Like just the melody. The or just the loop or whatever. Like, yo, take this. Rock with that, I'll be over here. I remember being in the studio with artists on several occasions where they like want the whole beat like cooked mm. up, done, 30 mm. minutes. Oh, come on, man, I'm trying to write this song. And like you said, you'll get it done. It's times where you got to pull it off. And then they take forever. Oh, yeah. So that's one of the greatest arguments for people that enjoy working remotely instead of with the artists. Because mm. when you work remotely, barring deadlines and everything, you can take your time. You can get it right. right. You can walk away, walk around. You know, because mm. when, when an artist is on your back in the studio. Oh, yeah. Woo. I just, I like that energy, times. though. I, I like being in the room. I like when you pr- play a sound and it's like, you know how you just be like, like sometimes I just have like a chord and I'm just like playing sounds and I'm just like doing little melodies and just kind of trying to figure out something. And then yeah. somebody made that face in the corner. They ain't even really paying attention. They didn't make that face like, what was that? I mm-hmm. love those moments of like you won't even really trying to do nothing, but it's like, oh, that's something, that's something. And Bruh. it to me, it's like difficult, not difficult, but it's like when you by yourself, that energy isn't the same. You don't get that, oh, that's I mean, you can, but it's not like the same when sometimes it's like you see somebody you, starting to bob their head or something, you like, oh, there, there it is. You know what I mean? You, yeah, you miss a lot of that when you're by mm-hmm. yourself. Cause you're doing the same stuff yeah. for the most part, but you just, it's, it's over your head. You're missing it. You're too close to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, not for nothing. One of my favorite things to do is be in a room full of people in, or in the studio and, and go through loops. Oh yeah. That's a vibe. Yeah. That's, that's, that's low key. My favorite part of the producer power summit mm-hmm. was sitting there and going through loops during the cookout or letting whoever jump on the push that I brought and just go through loops on their own. Or, and just watching uh, people's reactions and like, all right, people fuck with that. They fuck with that. Mm. Like you said, just that, just looking around and the reaction from other people. That's amazing. You can't you can't get that at the crib. Man, I, I want to get a room. I think I might get a room next couple couple days. I just want to go okay. somewhere and just like vibe out. Cook up? Yeah, man. I just want, you know, I want some good speakers, man. So, you know, little Osbergers, you know what I mean? Is that how you okay. pronounce those speakers? Is that, I always say. I, th- like I think you got it right. Okay, yeah. Something about yeah. those speakers, bro. They spoil you, dog. I, I, it's something about them speakers is so magical, dog. Because you could turn it. It's not like they don't. They don't make your ears hurt. It's like you could have them od loud, and your chest feel like you can't breathe. 
they but, just feel better. They don't yeah, get it, too loud. They just feel better. But it's not harsh on your ears. Now, I love like making a beat and it monitored like playing them on them. Yeah. It's a joyous occasion, bro. That's a good point. I call yes. them the, the mighty ducks. Yeah. 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 Damn. Okay. Hey, go go get a room somewhere, I guess, for a couple of days. And if, if you got a free day, y'all, invite your boy through. Man, I got, I'm dying to go somewhere, as you know. I need you to ask uh, who, you, who you've been working with about mm-hmm. this even, uh My old roommate, bro, used to be her engineer. Oh, snap. And I can't, okay. I haven't seen him in years, bro. And I just thought about it. I Because he had, we had those Osbergers in my house, bro. He would paint them. Jeez. And uh, like, and he sold them to some studio. But yeah, he Man. was her engineer and I hadn't seen him, bro. It's been like, oh, eight. I don't know why that, that made me think about it, but yeah, yeah. No, nah, that's right now. Nah, that's, that's, that's the, yeah, after the joint, let me know uh who it is. I'll I'll ask. But yeah, I I'll I'm inquire. A, I'm, I might pull up to the uh the old spot, man. I'll let you know if I'm uh sometimes it's coming a week. You know what I mean? Bruh, you know I'm there. You Choose know all you gotta do is I might even make a beat making video. Man, we might even man. whoa, whoa, yeah. <laughs> whoa. Hey, listen, man, you already know I'm there. I don't know what my GoPro is, work. so so we're gonna have to figure out. <laughs> we got to figure out another way. I ain't seen my GoPro one. in years. I'll just give you my GoPro, bro. I don't know where my GoPro is. That thing been in my. Yeah, I I just saw my joint in the drawer the other day, and not for nothing, that's my second GoPro because you know who stole my oh, first yeah. one. Bastard stole that joint. I don't care what nobody said. Anyway, that was crazy. <laughs> no, was Oracle crazy rolled out on somebody over some footage. I did, bro. I did. And I was mad because he stole my GoPro. Yeah, I mean, that is... couldn't prove it, but I'm like, you, ru- you yeah, ruined yeah. everything else in life, so I'm had sure you did that, too. Yeah, it had to be you. Yeah, you're the type. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, we rolling up on the time. Okay. Well, someone says, FL a good dog to start on. For sure. Oh, yeah. FL 100%. gang cuss. FL gang cut. I mean, I'm still... Oh, yeah. I'm still- I'm still a push boy at heart, you know what I mean. Ableton still, yeah. still love here, you know what I mean. Yeah, hey, but yeah, f- for a uh, beginner, uh, FL is definitely a dope dog. I mean, almost any dog is dope as a beginner. But I think the advantages of being a beginner on FL is anything's going to be a learning curve, and so the FL learning curve ain't going to be too crazy. And you're going to be on one of, if not the most popular dog. So it's not like you're gonna be on something and nobody uh, nobody else is gonna know anything about it or use it. Yeah, you know what I mean. You'll be able to collab. But listen, we coming up on the time. Um, before we get to the end, I just want to let everybody know that so is Mischief Line. After dial to seven digits, call up Bridget. The line is her man's a midget. Yeah, it is. Quintendo oh, just wow. put midget. He just put midget. He just put one word. I was like, oh, you almost had it. That's and then tough. uh the next person gave me the line. <laughs> Yo, she got friends so I can dig it, which is the line mm-hmm. after the line I asked for. So no one got that. But the three people that that won, uh, make sure you DM me on IG and I'll send you some packs tonight. Fire. Yes, indeed. So what you got going on, young Oracle? Man, listen, uh, getting ready for Black Friday. In the meantime, mm-hmm. hit up or, uh, soundoracle.net. Copy a mystery pack while the price is what it is now because it's an experimental thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the price is going to change uh also piano for producers the course is still going crazy get your theory down we talked about that in this show and not for nothing trap therapy also still going crazy Mm -hmm. so you know you can get that from soundworker.net or you can get trap therapy from the producer kit.com yes sir yes sir what you got going on bro man i actually forgot but i have a pre-black friday sale going on it's going on right now so go get the discounts i think oh it's 30 percent off uh simple packs right now so it's the it's the before black friday joints you know what i mean Calm so that means black friday is gonna be crazy you know what i mean so yeah yeah that's sir. all i got going on get some sample packs oh mystery drink check them joints out and um yeah oh yeah that's it man for sure oh uh quintino said snoop on joe rogan i definitely gotta check that out oh that's gonna be great yeah yeah, yeah for sure anyway uh listen man thank everybody for tuning in Tune in next week. Tell a friend about the show. And like we say at the end of every show, this has been another episode.